Peace be with you. I am Bruce Wozniak. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other platforms. Thanks so much for joining me for this and hopefully many other episodes. The show website is catholicsportsradio.net. You can listen there, but there are also links there to hear the show on all kinds of podcast listening apps, and there are links on the website to Catholic Sports Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can always send comments through the website, plus you can post thoughts, suggestions, and engage with other listeners in the show's Facebook group, which is called CSR Listeners. There's a button for that, too, on CatholicSportsRadio.net. Let me know what you like about the show, any particular guests you've really enjoyed, testimonies that have really spoken to you. Most importantly, let me know how Catholic Sports Radio has helped you in your faith life. Please help me spread the word about the show. I'd be most grateful if you would tell others to listen in as well. And by the way, if this is your first time listening, thank you. And do go back and listen to previous episodes of Catholic Sports Radio. There have been a lot of great guests, a lot of really good testimony. As for my ministry moment for this episode, how many times do you see a picture, and it could be video or a still photo, but think of how common it is to see a team huddled around their coach. I'm especially thinking of football, and particularly the entire team, maybe at practice, all standing around, usually in a semicircle, listening to their coach. Of course, we see it in the other sports too, basketball and hockey, I'm picturing a timeout and everyone is at the bench. But these images, and I know you're picturing it in your head right now, they illustrate how powerful those moments can be. Players listening so intently, hanging on the coach's every word. Of course, this also happens in the locker room when everyone is hearing from their coach before they go out into competition. And it shows you what great influence there can be if used properly. So many times in the Bible, we read stories of massive crowds all gathered around in much the same way, but not listening to a coach, they were hanging on every word of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, share the good news of Jesus Christ with those huddled around you. Yes, perhaps even in a sports setting. You hear a lot of guests on this show giving witness to how they are doing it. In John twenty-one seventeen, Jesus says, feed my sheep. Let's nourish those around us with something far longer lasting, something far more satisfying than winning a sports game by helping others get to heaven. Moving on now with this week's episode, my guest recently directed a Catholic men's conference in Texas and is currently studying for candidacy for a permanent diaconate program in his diocese. On the sports side, he spent many years in athletic training, both with college teams as well as the then NFL Houston Oilers. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Andy Sanye. Bruce, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So right off the bat, Andy, explain to the audience where specifically in Texas you are and how you and your wife did with Hurricane Laura. How are things as of right now? Uh, I live in uh, Orange, Texas, which is uh, southeast Texas. Uh, If you're driving I-10 from Louisiana, we're at the first exit after you uh, cross the Texas line. And yeah, about about five weeks, six weeks ago, I guess, uh, Hurricane Laura uh, came through here. It caused some damage here in Orange, but uh, really hit southwest Louisiana very hard. My hometown is in Benton, Louisiana, and they were devastated. Lake Charles, Louisiana, just completely devastated. And they've got years of recovery ahead of them. Mm. So uh, they could definitely all use, use plenty of prayers. And I think, did you lose power yourself for, I think, a week or so, maybe? We did. We did. Uh, a little over a week, we lost power here in Orange. Uh, but over across the border in Louisiana, uh, there were a couple of weeks, three weeks, some places, even up to four weeks in some places before they got power back. So how did you end up living where you are? Because you weren't even born in Texas. No, uh, I, I was born and raised in, in, in Vent, Louisiana. Spent uh, the first almost 50 years of my life well, up to about 53 years of my life, actually, uh, there. Uh, wow. And I, I met my wife in uh, 2014. Uh, she was from here in Orange. And just through God's will and different things that happened in our lives, we ended up here in Orange. After we got married, we, we lived in Louisiana for a few years, but then we, we eventually moved here last year. And just take the audience back to those very early years when you were just a child growing up in Louisiana. What did your family life look like? And of course, faith life. Yeah, I grew up on a farm, very small town, very rural setting. Uh, My dad farmed uh, rice and soybeans. 
from my earliest memories uh, I spent uh, with him, we were glued together, my dad and I. And, uh, you know, the earliest memories I have was uh, weekday mass uh, with my dad, you know, before the crack of dawn. I mean, very early in the morning. Uh, when we'd walk out of mass, sometimes it was still dark. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, that was a farmer's life, though. You know, uh, the day started very early because when, when the sun was up, if you weren't working, you were you were uh, burning daylight. Hmm. Well, we'll come back to the mention that I made during the intro of your studying for the permanent diaconate. But to your immediate family, that's probably not a surprise given the experience you had as a young boy. Yeah. As a kid, I was uh, very in tune with my faith. You know, we grew up in church, uh, went to Catholic school for a couple of years in middle school. And uh, it was there where I had a, uh, I had an experience uh, between my seventh and eighth grade year. I went to a seminary retreat and, uh, you know, I really felt Jesus speak to me on a personal level. And I really felt the calling to the priesthood at the time. And uh, regretfully, I let that calling pass. Mm. Uh, but I can't really regret it because God's got a plan for all of us. And uh, I think he's got other things still in store for me in the future. But, uh, you know, we, we make our own decisions. We have free will. But uh, I know the calling was there. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, so speaking of your calling, in college, you were already starting into doing work in athletic training. So what was it about that field that you felt called to serve athletes in that way? You know, as a kid, I loved sports. I I was glued to the TV, you know, on Sundays watching football, uh, college football on Saturdays, basketball, baseball, you name it. I wanted to watch it. You know, I spent most of my time out in the fields, you know, so I didn't really have the opportunity to play a lot of sports when I was a kid because, you know, helping out on the farm was more important, but I did have my share of time to, to play a little bit of peewee football and uh, little league baseball, things like that. But, uh, you know, that attraction to sports stayed with me, you know, and when I was in high school, I served a little bit as a, as a student manager and a student, student trainer. Hmm. And, uh, it, it opened up an avenue for me to go to college. So speaking of which, McNeese State University, where you went, has produced some notable sports names from former sure. NBA player Joe Dumars to sure. Kavika Pittman, who played in the NFL for eight years. Right. At the time that you went there, Andy, were you still thinking somewhere in the back of your head about that childhood call to the priesthood? Or were you hoping to parlay the athletic training work into an NFL job? Or maybe was it both? What was your mindset back then? You know, uh, my faith never really left me, but it did take a, a sort of a backseat to some of my personal goals. And my my sights were set on athletic training and, and having a career in that field. Mm. When I went to McNeese, my goal was to uh, go into physical therapy. Mm-hmm. I was going to uh, go to physical therapy school and and had that dual role as a physical therapist and athletic trainer, uh, okay. which opens up more doors for you. Uh, my grades just wasn't good enough to get into physical therapy school. So uh, I, I chose the education route and uh, majored in education with an emphasis in sports medicine. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, listeners like you, I do, of course, want to hear Andy talk about his time working for the NFL's Houston Oilers. But first, the last two episodes had been recorded very closely together. So on episode 89, I believe I was mentioning that someone had contacted me saying they were sending me a check. And that has since arrived here, but after I had already recorded episode 90. So I have actually already sent off the email too, but now I can say thank you, quote unquote, on the air to that individual for that contribution. At the same time, I do come before you to humbly ask you to prayerfully consider what you are comfortable contributing that will help me keep up with various costs that I'm having to take on out of my own pocket since I don't have any sponsors and I don't get any income from doing this every week. Understand that this is my ministry, and I do hope that some facet of the work that I do is helping you in some way with your faith life, even if it's testimony from a particular guest that I find and I book and then I interview. On the website, catholicsportsradio.net, 
You can support this ministry by way of the Donate to CSR button that you'll see there on the website. And by the way, in doing so, it also tells me that you enjoy and want to see me continue all that I do with Catholic Sports Radio. As you've heard me say before, this contribution that I'm publicly saying thank you for is just the latest donor who has opted to send me a check through the U.S. mail. You can do the same, especially if you don't like the idea of putting credit card information online secure as I know that is, (laughs) by just emailing me through the contact section of the website to get the address for me to send to. Otherwise, on catholicsportsradio.net, look for the Donate to CSR button, and you will notice that you can contribute in whatever amount you decide. There's no minimum, and there's not even a drop-down list of amounts to choose from. You put in whatever you want. No contribution is too big, and no contribution is too small. Thank you for your consideration as I continue to try to use my time and talents to be obedient to God's call and serve him through this show and hopefully help you out in your walk with him. Andy, go ahead and talk about your time working for the Houston Oilers. How did that come to be? And is it possible that there was a life lesson that maybe you took away from that experience? Well, uh, you know, after a couple of years at McNeese State, there, there was a, a student trainer that I worked with that uh, had already worked with the Oilers for a couple of years as, as a student intern. And uh, I always thought that would be something really cool to do, you know, that uh, give me some exposure that I needed. And uh, he said, well, he's just, you know, write a letter and, you know, we'll see what happens. And, and maybe you'll, you'll, you'll get picked for the, you know, for the next training camp. And uh, sure enough, you know, I, I submitted my application, wrote a letter explaining why I wanted to be, you know, a student intern with the Oilers, and got a phone call and uh, was was happy to, to join him for the 1986 training camp, which was an awesome experience in itself. You know, uh, what twenty year old, twenty one year old wouldn't <laughs> want to be <laughs> you know, in the middle of an NFL training camp, and uh, so it uh, it actually parlayed into uh, a, a little bigger role the following year and uh, in 87 I was I was chosen to be the assistant to the athletic trainer throughout the season so I commuted back uh-huh. and forth from McNeese to Houston you know throughout the season and any I'm sure you learned a lot more about athletic training but any life lessons anything that really kind of surprised you maybe that you were able to take away from that experience with them you know, I, I was really surprised at, at how, uh, you know, I guess going into working in the NFL, I was thinking, man, I'm going to be around a bunch of overpaid jerks. You know, <laughs> these guys are, are going to have tremendous egos, you know, and they're just, they're not going to give a crap about me. <laughs> you know? But I couldn't have been further, further from the truth. You know, uh, these guys been over backwards to show their appreciation. Wow. Uh, you know, you'd get a uh, little Christmas card at, at the end of the season, wow. you know, with a little, little cash in it showing, Hey, I, you know, thank you for all you've done this year. We know you don't make much money doing this, but you know, we appreciate you. And and it was, it showed that there's a lot of humility in some of these guys, you know, and they really appreciated things like that. Well, and clearly it did make an impression on you that here you are all these years later and it meant so much that you still remember that. And that's something oh, that yeah. you go back to. So they yeah. whether whether they knew it or not at the time, they were right. really making a good human gesture that really yeah. made an impression on you. And there, there's really some standout guys that I'll never forget on that team. Uh, Mike Golick was a was a great great person to be around. Uh, he was a Notre Dame graduate. Uh, he's been on ESPN for. 30 something years, you know, he did yeah. Mike and Mike in the morning. And, you know, he's, he's been a personality for ESPN for a long time, but I remember him when he was a, a rookie defensive lineman, you mm. know, in the NFL, you know, and, uh, came from humble beginnings, you know, uh, came from a great athletic family, but, uh, you know, great guy, always cracking jokes with me. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, he was always on my table to be taped, you know, <laughs> and, uh, it was always, you know, some kind of joke, you know, that we, we had that particular day or so. <laughs> <laughs> so after the Oilers, you went on to athletic training roles with LSU for football and baseball, and then you eventually returned to McNeese State. So what made you walk away from all that? Well, it, uh, with the Oilers, it was a, it was a two year internship, and that that hitch ended. And uh, I was still a student at McNeese, and in 1988, I transferred to LSU. 
I was uh, dating someone at the time and we ended up uh, getting engaged and, and later getting married, but she was already a student at LSU. And uh, I made the decision to transfer. Lost a ton of credits in the process. Mm. Set me back a little bit in my process of towards graduation. But uh, gained some great experiences at LSU. Walked in there and didn't have a spot in the athletic training room to start off. I walked I walked in cold off the street, talked to the head athletic trainer there and said, look, I'm, I, I'm transferring to LSU. Is there some way I can contribute in your training room? And he's like, wait, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this, you've got all these credentials. Uh, yeah, I think I could find a spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I worked, I worked football season of uh, 89 at LSU and uh, uh, there was a spot where uh, the, the guy who was the head trainer for the baseball team uh, moved over across the street to the basketball team, which opened the spot for me in, in baseball. Uh, I had, did have a little experience at McNeese with, with baseball, and uh, I fit right in uh, with the LSU baseball team, which was probably my, sing, my single greatest uh, moment in athletic training uh, any, any particular team that I was with I've got uh, some of the best memories with that team for those two years because uh, we built some lifelong friendships mm. uh, and uh, those guys on, on that baseball team they, they treated me as and still do treated me as one of the team you know mm. like just like one of the players you know we were we were a family and uh, that family was really uh, fostered by uh, coach Skip Bertman who, uh, he didn't have any sons of his own, but uh, um, we were all his. We were all his boys, you know. And he treated us treated us as such. You know, we were his boys. So, with the way that it sounded like everything was going for you, why did you walk away from a career in athletic training? Uh, well, you know, the uh, the ninety one baseball season, we won the national championship. It was uh, it was a very bittersweet year for me. Although winning a championship should be a highlight of your, of your year yeah i uh, also went through a divorce that year mm. and uh you know it really kind of i was i was at a low point in my life but i was also at a crescendo in my life and it just uh if it wasn't for that team and uh coach Bertman and uh you know some other other people uh it was it could have been really pretty tragic for me uh I owe, I owe God all credit in the world for getting me through that year because uh, without uh, without Him, I, I don't know where I'd be today. It was hard dealing with adversity, going through a going through a divorce at an early age like that, and uh, I learned some lessons from that. I, I guess you could say. Yeah, and so clearly it was time for some changes, and one of them was, was. walking away from it athletic was. training. Yeah, I did because I, I mean I, I needed income. I needed a little more income than a student income. Gotcha. Uh, and when we were married, we, we both we were both on student incomes. So I did walk away from athletic training. Uh, I hadn't graduated yet. I had a lot of loose ends in my life. Uh, I stayed in Baton Rouge for another three years. I sold cars. I worked for a private investigator. I did a lot of odd jobs to make ends meet. Uh, uh, and then in 94, uh, I think it was 94, my old boss at McNeese State, Jim Murphy, contacted me, and uh, he had left McNeese for a while, went off to, uh, to do physical therapy work, I think in El Paso at the time, and he was said he called me and said, oh, look, I'm coming back to McNeese. He said, I know you haven't graduated yet. How about joining me? You know, I'll, He said, I'll help you any way I can financially, and uh, you know, we'll work towards you becoming a graduate assistant. We'll get you graduated, and then you become a graduate assistant. How's wow. that sound? I said, I stopped. Wow. You, you don't know what that means to me because I really need my degree. I got to finish that. So, uh, yeah, I went back to McNeese and uh, graduated there in 96 with a bachelor's in science and I uh, stayed on for another year, worked on my master's. And then eventually I just got kind of burned out on uh, athletic training. Well, uh, but still, it sounds like the Holy Spirit was really present there and yeah. moved in that turmoil that your life was suffering from. And all of a yeah. sudden sent this guardian angel, which was your former boss, to say, hey, why don't you come That's back right. and let's get you finished up? That's right. God, God's opened a lot of doors for me. And I, I, I give credit to him for everything that's happened in my life. Because Amen. It's, uh, 
God's will is, is, is a funny ride. It, it can really be a, quite a journey. Amen. So fast forward to present day, although I should say, I, I wish we could have done this interview, say, two or three months ago, because this episode is coming out after your Catholic Men's Conference has taken place. But it is an annual event, so tell the audience about what you and your team do each year. Sure. You know, we started uh, in 19... Eight, uh, 1918. <laughs> well, not 1918. Uh, 2018 was our first men's conference. My pastor, Father Sinclair Oob, uh, approached me one day and said, uh, he says, I- I'm really interested in, in hosting a men's conference here at St. Francis. He says, uh, would you be interested in helping me out? And it was me and a couple other guys sitting around. We, we, were, tr- we were planning a retreat at the time, mm. and none of us had really heard of a men's conference, didn't know what it was. We had a lot on our plates at the time. But man, it just, it put a little ping on my heart. And although I didn't give him an answer at the time, it never lost my mind. A couple of weeks later, I caught I I call him after mass. I said, hey, Father, I said, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really interested in doing this, this men's conference. I'm really interested in looking into this a little bit further. He says, uh, I, I, said I, I said, I'm all in, I'm all yours. Uh, tell me what you want to do. Come on, let's go to my office right now. Let, I, I'm gonna show you my ideas, you know, so. Uh, it just it sprung from there, and we started looking at the speakers. And our first speaker was Deacon Harold Brooks Sivers, dynamic deacon. He's uh, he was fantastic. He lit the room on fire, uh, and it propelled itself to the next year with Father Larry Richards. Mm. Uh, this pat in this past year, we uh, we had Bear Wasnick. Well, past month rather, uh, Bear Wasnick came in and did a phenomenal job as our third presenter, and uh, I'm already planning uh, for number four. <laughs> you know, it's, it's in the works. Fantastic. Fantastic. And listeners, of course, you know, Bear Wozniak was a guest on this show and he was kind enough to have me as a guest on his show. Andy, you are also very involved with the Knights of Columbus. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I've been very involved with the Knights Uh, here in the last couple of years. Not quite so much because of the the, the amount of, of of things I've got on my plate right now, but in the past I was, uh, I'm a past grand knight over, uh, in my hometown of Fenton. And, uh, that was, a, that was a really great experience, uh, being a grand knight because it was, uh, really my first true taste in, in Catholic leadership. Mm. And it was, it was, it was, it's a service. It's absolutely a service where at some point in your life, you have to step up and be the person for others. You know, you can't always be the guy sitting out the chair listening. You have to sometimes take your turn and do your bid at service. And it, it really propelled me towards other things in my Catholic faith life. Amen. And I'm here to echo what Andy said, because listeners, hopefully you know my story by now. And as I've said, this is my ministry. I don't get paid to do this, but I felt on my heart that God said, Bruce, you have all this experience in sports You've been a Catholic your whole life. You have all this experience in broadcasting and with my other, my music podcast that I've been doing for more than six and a half years now. You have all this equipment. Why not do it? We always hear in church, time and talent. You can at least give back with your time and talent. And so it was time for me to step up and say, okay, how can I possibly lead more people closer to Christ through all I know, sports, Catholic faith, broadcasting slash podcasting. And, and here we are with Catholic Sports Radio. And Andy, as we get ready to wind down this episode, take us a little closer into the journey that you're on to the permanent diaconate. You know, uh, everything is through discernment. We have to we have to really spend time with with God and let him show us our paths in life. None of my bad decisions in life was ever preceded by prayer. Hmm. I can tell you that I've made some bad choices, bad decisions. And I guarantee you, every one of those, I never sat down and prayed about those decisions before I made them. Mm. So, saying that, you know, we have to uh, we have to discern, we have to listen to God, and, and and right now He's telling me your course is to take the path of the, of the permanent diaconate. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be a permanent deacon yet. It just means that I'm taking the steps to prepare for you know, for that program. Uh, which is a lot of coursework online, uh, and it takes up a lot of a lot of your uh, a lot of personal time. So you have to be dedicated to do that. Hopefully, I make that next step and and, and enter the program. 
that's where I'm, I'm heading in that direction. That's where I feel God is calling me. That could change. I don't know, but it's God's will, not mine. And uh, other than that, um, I want to take take one minute just to, just to say that you know, working in athletics prepared me for a lot of things later in life because without working in athletics, you, I, I never would have had some of the discipline that I needed to get through uh, some things in life. You know, athletes practice. They practice to become very good at what their role is with the team. You know, whether you're a quarterback, you're a defensive back, you're a point guard, you're a designated hitter, it doesn't matter. You practice for that position, and that's how you get better. As Catholics, we practice, practicing Catholics, we practice our faith to get us further along in our faith because God calls us to be saints. Am I a saint? Not even close, but I won't get there if I don't practice. Mm. So he calls us all to be saints, but we have to practice our faith every day. And uh, we're going to fall. We're going to trip. We're going to get back up. And hopefully we've got brothers around us to help us along that journey, you know, to, to, to help pick us up and lift us up and keep us moving forward because that's, that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to be men of faith, men of action. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Andy, thank you for being on Catholic sports radio. God bless you. And audience, let's make sure that we lift up Andy in prayer as he continues to discern his call to the permanent diaconate. Andy, thank you again for your time. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Bruce, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed this. Listeners, it's been a while that we have done our sportsman's prayer. So let's close this episode with that one and do it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with our minds, our spirits, and our bodies. Help us always to be good sports. Help us to understand that when we put on the team uniform, we are first and foremost ambassadors of the Catholic faith. May we always remember that those with whom we play and compete are our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we always treat each other with dignity and respect. May our work and play always give you honor and glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those. C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose. Mm-hmm.